Well, let's get started. First off, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming here today. Here we are. It's Friday, you know, holiday weekend. So I appreciate it. Uh, this conference has been absolutely amazing. It's been great to meet uh, a lot of the folks here in the room. Um, I can't tell you how many people have come up to our booth and said, hey, we absolutely love your stuff. You've, you've saved us so many times. So as an employee at Code42, it feels wonderful to have customers come up and, and say those sorts of things. Um, I have one goal here with, with this presentation or, or you know, exchange back and forth between all of us, and that is I want all of you to go out and, and download Crash Plan Pro E. Hopefully I intrigue you enough to, to go out there, download our free trial, and, and try it out. And, and when you do that, you know, make sure that you, you get in touch with me, uh, Joe at code42.com. I'll get you in touch with the right people to have some cloud space carved out so you can try it out on five, ten computers and get a, get a full flavor for, for who we are. Crash Plan Pro E. I'm going to talk a little bit about Code 40, 42, our story, our history, uh, talk about this uh, concept of reinventing backup, and we'll have plenty of time for q and I'm going to try and rapidly go through this, uh, kind of Twitterize this uh, presentation so we can you know, get to some good conversations. This is one of my favorite slides to show. As you can see, we've had you know, plenty of brand name companies out there, uh, big universities that have gone through the due diligence process and vetted us out against other endpoint solutions and chose us. And so we're, we're very proud of that. We're, we're extremely happy to work with, with each and every one of those. So Code 42, who's Code 42? We were born, you know, we started up in Minneapolis 12 years ago by three engineers out of the University of Minnesota. And basically they were, you know, working on some one-off projects for, for a number of other companies. And they said, gosh, what would happen if we lost our music and if we lost our, our, <laughs> our photos? All this stuff that's really important. And so, they, uh, they said, let's design something. And so they did, and the initial product was just a peer-to-peer -peer solution. I could back up my computer to your computer, and vice versa. And so it just started out as, as something to solve a problem that they had. The backup problem, you know, over the past five years has been this. You know, it required human intervention. It re required me to do something to schedule a backup, to perform a backup, to monkey around with tapes, uh, to do a whole bunch of stuff that was just an absolute nightmare. Backups weren't built for laptops. You know, these are mobile devices. I'm everywhere. I'm in Starbucks. I'm all over the place. I obviously can't back up to tape when I'm sitting in Starbucks having a coffee. Shared drives are not backup. Box, Dropbox, other collab tools, not backup. We're right back to the same point of it requires me to grab a file, put it over someplace else, and I don't know about you, but I never, I, I never remember to do that all the time. And, and it just doesn't, the, the backup solutions in the past just didn't scale. This is who we are. We have three products, soon to be two products, because uh, we have our consumer product, which some of you may be familiar with. Uh, we've, we've grown from zero users to, you know, almost two million users on the consumer product right now. Crash Plan Pro was designed for small businesses. It's just a straight to the cloud solution. 
And then what we're here to talk about today is our Pro-E Enterprise product. Some of the best features of Pro-E is that it runs on everything. Uh, we even run on Solaris. I'm sure some of you have some Solaris boxes laying around there at some point that needed to be backed up. So our solution consists of really three components. Pro-E hardware, or, or our private cloud, the client and the, the server software, as well as our mobile applications. So we have mobile applica applications for iPhone, Android, um, Windows. I mean, I got mine right here, so I can pull up basically any file that's, that's on my computer at home, which is kind of neat if, if you forget your laptop, uh, you always have your files handy right here. We've heard multiple stories of people going overseas, their laptop got stolen, uh, they had the mobile device and they could access a PowerPoint or, or some other file that they needed to have access to to do their job. Well, if the Wi-Fi doesn't work and you have to use 4G on your phone. Exactly. <laughs> so our solution's designed to be flexible. It's designed to be architected the way you want it done. So you can go straight to our cloud, you can go straight to your local storage, or you can do a combination of, of, of both of them at simultaneously. Pro-E Cloud, uh, this, if you back up and remember I told you our consumer product grew to, you know, close to two million users right now, they're running on our hardware. So these are RAID 6 devices, purpose-built uh, to specifically run crash plan and do it highly effective. And so obviously it, it scales. <clears throat> Public cloud, just what I talked about. That's, that's our cloud that you can go straight to, uh, to our cloud and, and perform your backups there. Hybrid solution going to our cloud as well as to some local storage. Here's, here's some key you know, points to, to look at in terms of our cloud. Seven VCs around the globe. They're all tier four DCs, highest security level out there. And this is an older slide because we're, we're well over 200 petabyte of information under management right now. But that is compressed, deduped information. If you unraveled all of that, we're over two exabyte of data stored out there right now, which is mind boggling to me. <laughs> so our hardware, when we build a private cloud, is fully 24 seven monitored and managed by us. So if anything goes wrong with, with this hardware, we're going to know about it before, before you do, and we'll proactively reach out to you and, and say, hey, we see something going on here. Let, we're, we'll, let's, let's try and clean this up right now. Software. This is what the client looks like. Uh, main things to remember is it's a continuous backup, so it's running invisibly in the background. Your end users uh, more than likely won't know that it's even you know, going on. It runs on every platform. Uh, we have self-service, so as an admin, you can perform the restore for the end user or they can perform it themselves, uh, either through an iPhone, iPad app, or opening up uh, the web app and, and performing either a full restore of, of their whole device or just grabbing certain files and, and pulling those down. The duplication process, as I mentioned, this is, this is one of our secret sauces. Whoops, let me back up here. 
Here's a Word doc. Let's say you go back into this Word doc, make some changes. Rather than setting up that whole Word doc again, we're just going to send up the small incremental changes. So block dedupe. As an administrator, on the, you can throttle the bandwidth. Uh, you, can, you can say, hey, I only want my users to back up when they're on our network. I don't want them backing up you know, on a 3G network. Uh, I, only, I don't want them to back up certain files. Let's say you don't want your users to back up movie files to save on storage and, and so forth. You have all that granular ability to do that. Adoption, this is just uh, basically performing a restore on a new computer. If I had a computer that you know, crashed, got stolen, lost, whatever the case may be, I get a new device. It's as simple as you know, clicking a, a few buttons. That new device is adopted, and all the files would be pushed over to, to that new device. The mobile application, as I mentioned earlier, great way to access your files anywhere, and it's really slick. So here's, here's the server. It's, uh, it's going to give you a, a window into your entire environment where all your users are at in terms of uh, backups being completed, um, all sorts of great stats there. Admin Council, real-time stats. So you're, you're going to always know where everybody is at. You can, you can also, we have an API that, that you can work with if you have some special reports that you need to uh, perform, something you can kind of bake into to our product as well. REST, it, REST API. Correct. Correct. Here's a screen cap of, of you know, how simple an admin restore is. You'd, you'd select a device, and then you could go down you know, to a file and grab a particular file, restore that, or you can just click on the top and restore the entire, entire device. Some of the unique ways people are, are using this is Legal holds. I don't know how many you know, folks here have to deal with legal holds, but University of Texas, their process before using crash plan was, okay, we need to perform a legal hold. Let's have that person bring their laptop in. We'll take an image of that. You know, three or four days later, the person would get their laptop back. So from start to finish, it was about a week-long process. With crash plan, the person doesn't have to bring in their laptop. You perform a restore to you know, an external drive, to another device, and it's, it's completed in minutes. So it's, it's just kind of a, a unique case study, case you know, thing that, that we do, which is pretty cool. Security, um, that's our, our top priority. Everything is done, all the heavy lifting is done at the machine level. So a file is first grabbed, it's compressed, it's encrypted at a 448-bit encryption level uh, at the local machine level, and then is transmitted at a 128-bit encryption level uh, over the wire. The main thing to remember is it's never left unencrypted. It's always in an encrypted state. We work with LDAP, AD, uh, just an easy process to, to add your folks into crash plan and, and roll this thing out. Destinations. I want you to think of destinations as uh, a storage bin. So one destination could be our cloud. Another destination could be a, a server that you have locally. Uh, and with crash plan, you can you can have unlimited destinations. So you could you could have uh, backups going to three, four, five different locations if if need be. Another one of our secret sauces is our our data balancing. 
and we balance it across, you know, across all of your destinations. So if if one of these servers starts, you know, filling up with with a lot of data, it automatically balances itself out, and it's it's really cool process. A professional services team, they're there to help you uh, do some LDAP scripting, uh, any other special needs that your environment would have. We have a, a full staff of uh, professional services folks that are there to help you and uh, make sure that everything is, is rolled out quickly and you know, to, you know, to meet your needs. So that was it. I told you it was going to be you know, Twitterized, but I wanted to save a, enough time to you know, have a discussion. Is there any questions in terms of, go ahead. So the multiple destinations thing, mm -hmm. if I have a laptop that's got its initial backup and it's all up to date, and they go in the field and they're relying on the free, uh, free G cell phone camera. Right. And I have them set to backup to multiple locations. Right. If you're going to send one copy of that data to my backup server or to my premises and then to your cloud server or wherever else, where does it back up to one of the servers and then that server? It's going simultaneously, so it would be, yes. Yeah? With the, with the Pro-E servers, you said you obviously can go to the cloud or you can go to your own equipment. And you said that when it started out, it started out as peer-to-peer. -peer. Could you also set it to, uh, with the Pro services, to go out to your, you know, let's say you have a, a, a lab full of computers that are, you know, hardly ever used or, or you know, they have ter terabyte drives on them and you just right. said, you know what, I, I just want to use these things. Right. Um, so you, could you do that as well? And would that improve your performance if you had to do a, a restore? Um, yeah, obviously, uh, we always recommend having, uh, you know, a local, you know, backup storage uh, just for that point is that your restores are minutes versus performing a restore over the over the internet um, you could do some peer-to-peer -peer, uh, within that and just have it be another destination but then you, you'd, you'd be setting up a lot of destinations <laughs> well hopefully you're going to multiple destinations <laughs> No, I mean, it would be like a, uh, I'm thinking a, a third destination at the, at the minimum. So. Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yes? You said soon to be two products. What are you we, We're just eliminating uh, the pro and pro E. It's just going to, there's going to be a consumer product and an enterprise product. Because it, it just confused people, including myself. That's correct, yes. Correct. Okay. And, and soon to be more features and functionality. So that middle tier is going way better. It is. Okay. Yeah. No, we'll still we'll still have the, the very competitive pricing for that sort of volume. Yes. Can we make it blind to the end user? Just you like force it through, and your computer being backed up, you don't even know that it's happening, but it is. Yep. You can. In fact, uh, we've had four or five companies do that, where they've they've silently push installed out to all their devices and then a month later the employee received an email that said hey congratulations your device is 100 percent backed up so I like that long or you finish in an hour well, I'm talking 10,000 20,000 devices 
Yeah. Yeah. What would you do with someone push like that? How do you determine how the, the client authenticates the crash plan and how the procedures then go back and restore? Run that by me again. So. Yeah. The client just once has to authenticate either through LDAP right. or through uh, account just through crash plan. So sure. I'm just going to push a, push the client out and have it start backing up. Mm -hmm. But in my experience, I've always had to log in to crash plan to start that backup. So how do we get around? I'll have to, I'll have someone get back to you with the process that they they went through to to do that. Okay. I don't know if it was within. I only want to speculate. Yep. Yes. Yes. How that works. I would imagine that it uses some sort of admin level account that only is in the image of the computer storage. I mean, that's how I would want it. Right. So it's one account that's logged in everywhere. Well, but then the additional system would say this computer, computer A, B, C, D, and then keep all their images separate. Yeah, what? Yeah. Right, and you can, you can, you can group users and give uh, certain people certain rights, you know, admin rights over over multiple groups. Uh, you can you can eliminate the self service restore. Right. Yeah, uh, all those capabilities are there, where you, where you'd open up your admin council, you would uh, group users together based on you know profiles, if you will, and this group would be allowed to back up everything, do self service restores, do everything. This group here, we just want them only backing up certain files. And we don't want them performing self-service uh, restores. So it's as simple as checking boxes, essentially, unchecking boxes. And it, it, what I'm concerned about, it, I'm not sure if it came out clearly enough there, um, is if my faculty, if, if we use the blind type install, and then faculty member A in the psychology department would they be able to see faculty member B's data in the philosophy department? Not at all. Not at all. How do you, how do you differentiate between them? Because there's, it's a silent install, and the presumption here it seems to be that there's one account. You no. Know, it, yeah, it's 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 per device, and there you you need the encryption keys for, you know. Each of those devices to to uh, get access to the, to that data. How do I get access to my data on my phone with my laptop that is stolen or sure. fire burned down the thing? Do I have to like use their app or something on my phone? Do they have to be pre-registered somehow before I can do that? Yep. Well, obviously you need a, a crash plan account. Uh, your email address, a password, you download the app from the App Store and enter your credentials in and away you go. Yeah. Then whatever devices are registered through your account, I imagine you have access to from your phone. Absolutely. So if you have three computers, you can probably see those three computers and then you see those hard drives or those user files and you say, okay, now you can get that. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, if there's people access to other people's data, it can't occur. 
it, yeah, it just can't happen. Right. Thanks. Can you talk about your your hardware and um, I guess the uh, give us an idea of uh, your your pro end users. How many are using their own hardware versus using your hardware? And then maybe uh, I don't know if you can speak to you know what's the popular alternative as far as hardware that's being used by users. Their own hardware, are they using Snap appliances? Or, you know, or what, are, what, are, what are other people using, and how much are, they, are, you, are most of your customers using their hardware? Okay, good question. Um, typically, when, when we have 500 users and above, we're, we're heavily you know, recommending that, that they use our hardware just due to. We've, we've spent 10 years of R&D. Um, if you think about our consumer, our consumer product and these millions of users backing up and the you know, exabyte of, of, of data out there, it's in our best interest to make sure that that hardware runs extremely well, extremely efficient. So. I would much rather have that solution in your hands than, you know, we got some hardware here that we'd like to leverage, and then and call my prof professional services team into the mix and, you know, get you set up that way. But that being said, I would say over half of our, of our enterprise clients are, are running our hardware. And the folks that are running it on, on their own stuff, it's all over the map, you know, whatever they have <laughs> laying around and they, they, that they can leverage. But it's doable, it's just not the most efficient way of doing it. Yeah? Um, can I ask, what, how is the product license that you pay sure. per device that's being backed up? We, we've moved to a user-based model, so you get up to four devices uh, per user. So you can back up a laptop, a desktop, use an iPhone and an iPad app. Um, it's a soft limit, so if, if you don't get too crazy on us, we, we, we won't say anything. <laughs> but yeah, user-based model, SaaS-based licensing, uh, X dollars a year per user. And it, it depends on whether you're, you're, you're doing a private cloud solution or whether you're just going right to our cloud uh, as to how the, the price breaks down. Yes? Yes. 
two questions. The first, um, do you do snapshots? Like, can I pick when to roll back to, or is it just what this is? By default, we keep unlimited versions of files. So you go back to however far back you want to go. You can limit that. You can say only go, only save six months of, of files, okay. or versions, excuse me. Um, part two of that is um, I have a time capsule for my personal laptop sure. in my living room. And yeah. It came in really handy when I did the 1068 combo update, and it crashed my machine. Yes. Um, and three clicks and four hours later, it like from the reinstall screen, the Mac gives you the option to restore from time capsule to backup. Do you have some equivalent to that, that if somebody runs their laptop over with a truck or leaves it in France or whatever and it's gone, that they can just get a brand new Mac out of the box and three clicks restore the last backup of their old machine and it looks just like their old machine? Yeah, you're talking you're talking bare metal restore. Uh, that's going to be coming out in our next version update. So it's coming. Right now, it's it it would be just get a new laptop, uh, install the applications, and then push over the files. Yep. Yeah. Um, with all the Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just wondering about all the overhead of network traffic. Is it, uh, is it becoming a problem, especially over wireless networks, um, in getting complaints? You, you know, we haven't got we haven't gotten a lot of pushback there because when we when we initially roll this out in an environment, we usually map it out, you know, pretty good, so that that there's not a huge impact on your network. Um, after the yeah, you'll see some load on that on that initial backup, but after that, it's it's just drips on your network because it's not uh, it's not grabbing the whole thing anymore. It's just grabbing the the changes that you've made throughout that day. So could you see your backup? Yes. Okay. Yes. So if you have a, a good backup, we can hand that over to you, or, or, or somehow put it into the, to the file system, whatever we're using, whether it's our hardware or your hardware, and you guys can take over from there. So. Absolutely. And typically how we handle that is we would, we would bring out a piece of our hardware, fill it up, so to speak, and then you know, either put it in your data center or, or bring it back to our data center if we're, if we're seeding our cloud. Yes. And when do you suspect, and this is always a difficult question to ask and answer, but when do you suspect the next wave of complaints that will have the bare metal? This summer. Yeah. Because eventually it's going to come and buy the solid. Right. Great question. Uh, you'll be happy to hear that we're going completely native on, on all platforms in our next release. So uh, it'll be eliminated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how granular are the backups? Are they in the whole file or just change? So well, I initially it's the whole file, and then it's just okay, so the changes. If I edit a five gig file and I change a hundred bytes of it, you just back and change just not the entire file. Exactly. Exactly. Yes? How do you handle the constant fluidity of the OS that Uh.
itself is like a promotion. It's without even touching any box. Sure. Without me opening up a Word document and adding a letter to it. Right. Um, I'll have to have some, someone answer that a little bit better. I, you know. <laughs> it also sounds like you can adjust how many snapshots you keep, but can possibly yes. generally control which parts of snapshots you keep. If you say document folder, keep every snapshot forever, but library folder and applications folder, keep two snapshots and then dump the old one. Yes. Can kind of do that. Yes, it can get that granular. Yeah. Things that back up the entire drive once a week in my home directory continuously. So even if they overlap, they, they will look like that. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to know the answer to these, and that's okay. No. Sort of a secure question. Um, one of the things that we have to be concerned with for these cloud services is data discovery for use in litigation tools. Yep. And for things like Fox and built in for things like Google Apps, we've had to go to buy. Third party service to help with that. Yep. Can you talk about what Google does in that case? Sure. So, are you talking specifically to e discovery? Yes. Um, what sort of features we're going to be adding in there? I mean, right now we have, we have search capabilities and those sorts of things. We will be adding uh, more e discovery features uh, in this next release. Uh, right now, it's you know pull the pull the files down you know through crash plan and then use an e-discovery tool to to d dive deeper into it yeah Yes, you can do that. My other question was we just need to we just need to, you know, beef beef up some of those e-discovery features, if you will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not sure what that machine might be. Mm -hmm. And we really, with Google and Fox at least, you physically have to put that file in the folder for it to be synced. Mm -hmm. But the crash plan is really all inclusive. Right. So, FERPA and FIPA data is something that we have a huge concern about because of the type of research tool. Yes. So, how do we, how do we address that? We address, it, we address it this way, and correct me if I'm wrong, but HIPAA, to be HIPAA compliant, is on your shoulders, if you will, uh, falls, you know, everything that we do is HIPAA compliant because our, our, our data centers, our tier four data centers, our encryption level is, you know, outstanding. Um, but the, the, the very end point final decision from, from a HIPAA rule standpoint would fall into your court. So... We do everything uh, on our end to ensure that you're HIPAA compliant, but it, you know, it's still up to you to have the final uh, say, if you will. Do you use any facilities that are outside of the Code 42's jurisdiction to cache or store data like Amazon or offline? We don't. We don't. So it's all in-house? It's all in-house. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We own all of them. They're, they're, yeah. It's all our stuff. Yeah. Do you have any associate agreements? 
We... Yeah. And one of the ways that we that it helps us is we make sure that everybody that we work with has a business associate, HIPAA a business associate uh, agreement that they sign. So that way we know flat out what it is that they're doing and what we're what responsibility we're taking. Right. And we have signed those before in the past and we 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 haven't done that we haven't given a, a, a company that document yet though. Correct. <laughs> You're a sucker. <laughs> I didn't want to read that first. <laughs> yeah. Have my legal team worry about that. Stanford Medical School, Michigan Medical School, Mayo Clinic, uh, a number of, of yeah. Anything else? Anybody ready for the holiday weekend? <laughs> yeah, so get out there, download our stuff, try it out, uh, reach out to me or reach out to, to anybody in our, on our sales team to make sure that we carve you out some, some cloud space so you get the full treatment uh, and, and get the full experience. Um, you know, typically we run demos on these you know, in these sort of sessions, but I'm kind of glad we didn't this time because I'd much rather have have it in your hands and and let you go through the process. So, I appreciate the time. Uh, it's been great here, and look forward to seeing you guys next year.